an alter ego for every occasion, one part kid, ten parts hero. It's hero time! After watching a hopping eight episodes of your favorite series today, I'm gonna explain the entirety of Ben 10 Omniverse from start to finish in detail. Ben 10 Omniverse is the fourth installment of the Ben 10 franchise which premiered on Cartoon Network in September 2012 and concluded in November 2014. The basic setting of Ben 10 Omniverse is pretty much the same as the previous installments, although there are some notable changes in art style and animation. The series also introduces one of my favorite characters from the entire Ben 10 franchise, Rook Blanco. Rook Blanco, Magister Tennyson sent me. Grandpa? Not only does the show have some new exciting villains, but it also provides us with some old school villains and many surprises. Also, the video is gonna be quite long, so I'm gonna skip the unimportant or filler episodes and focus solely on the canon ones. So sit back, grab your smoothies, and enjoy the video as we delve into the world of Ben 10 Omniverse. Season 1. Before we get into the present, we gotta go back five years into the past to get some context. So Ben's fighting this alien called Malware. He goes four arms, but Malware gets the upper hand and snatches the Omnitrix, which makes Ben go back to being human. Malware starts taunting him, but then the Omnitrix kicks back in, and Ben transforms into Feedback. With Feedback's power to absorb energy, Ben totally schools Malware. After winning, Feedback is all hyped up, doing victory dances like he's on the basketball court. He shoots! He scores! But as the Feedback transformation wears off, Ben hits the ground. He gets back up fast, though, and tells Malware to scram before things get worse. Now coming back to the present, Team Ben is doing their usual hero antics, with the trio managing to capture a villain named Zombozo. However, their celebration is cut short when Gwen reveals she's leaving town for college. Kevin is heading out too, so Ben is left alone to face a new threat from a guy named Kyber and his pet, who has some mysterious powers. To help him solve the criminal case, Max assigns him a plumber named Rook, whom Ben isn't so fond of at first. However, as the two work together, their efforts lead them to a hidden underground alien city called Undertown where the criminals have fled. Meanwhile, Kyber, who is still on Ben's trail, sends his Nemetrix-powered pet to capture him. Nemetrix is more of a copy of the original Omnitrix, but more on that later. Ben and Rook pursue a gang of alien criminals through Undertown. Ben is surprised by Undertown's existence and also insists he and Rook are not partners. They split up to chase different members of the gang, with Rook capturing Fistina and Ben pursuing Liam. When they meet at a transport tunnel, Ben accidentally transforms into NRG and spits on the ground in frustration. Rook apprehends Liam, nice going, Rook. Uh, for a newbie, I mean. but they are both nearly hit by a bus with no brakes. The bus drives off into Undertown, and Ben decides to explore the underground city. Meanwhile, Kyber collects NRG's spit and sends his pet Bug Lizard after Ben. In Undertown, Rook's attempts to interrogate locals hinder Ben's efforts to find food. Just then, Bug Lizard arrives and causes chaos, leading to a battle where Ben and Rook eventually subdue the creature. Following a potential lead in the suspect named Bubble Helmet, Ben and Rook discover Siphon overseeing a criminal operation to extort protection money from Undertown's businesses. Siphon plans to use bombs in Bellwood to enforce his demands. Ben and Rook confront Siphon. I made a wisecrack. And, and despite some setbacks, the duo manages to defeat the criminals. Later, Max reveals he paired the two so Ben could mentor Rook, but after their recent mission together, Ben sees him as more of a partner rather than a student. Meanwhile, Kyber sees Ben as his next trophy and starts planning on how to capture him. The next episode takes us into the past, where Ben is at the grand opening of Mr. Smoothie, and there's this Nosdenian causing chaos. They have this funny showdown where Ben's kinda struggling, but then feedback comes in and saves the day. Fast forward five years, Ben's 16 now, and he's out on patrol with Max and Rook. Rook's all pumped to work with Ben, but their patrol is mostly chill, with just some misunderstandings and scared alien crooks. And out of the blue, they spot this sketchy dude Corvo messing with some illegal alien tech. Chasing him leads them to more Nosdemians, who've been held captive by a gang led by a guy named Fistric. Ben and Rook take on the thugs and then face off against Fistric, who is in a giant robot suit. Ben transforms into Grab Attack, and with Rook's backup, the two kick Fistric's butt. Max shows up just in time to arrest the baddies and the Nosdemians, who are now free from slavery, offer to power up Undertown as thanks. When strange gadgets crash down to Earth, 
Ben springs into action as Crash Hopper, keeping them at bay while Rook gets folks to safety. These gadgets end up anchoring a wrecked ship to Earth, pulling Ben and Rook into the mystery. Inside, they find the Vriedel brothers scavenging around. After a scuffle, Ben switches to Grey Matter and learns the Vriedels aren't the culprits. They run into Argit, who boasts about having the Enhaler, a weapon that can wipe out entire universes. When the incursions show up, Ben and Argit team up, but Argit double-crosses him. The Vriedels grab the Enhaler and bolt, so Ben, Rook, and Argit chase them down. Things get wild at Mr. Smoothie, where Ben has to bust out Alien X to fix things after the Enhaler goes off. But once it's all said and done, Ben recreates the universe, with the only notable change being the Mr. Smoothie building and logo. So long and thanks for all the smoothies. While all of this is going on, Kyber's on a mission to capture Ben, so he sends his dog, which morphs into Slime Worm, to attack Ben at Burger Shack. Ben goes Diamond Head to take on Slime Worm, but can't stop it from burrowing away. Ben and Rook then chase down Dr. Anemo, thinking he's behind the attacks, only to find he's busted out of jail. They follow a trail of ants to Anemo's lair, where they learn he's trying to mutate all Earth's ants into big mutants. They face off against Anemo in a giant anthill, and with the help of Ben's new alien form, Crash Hopper, they shut down his plan. But just when they think it's over, Kyber steps in, turning his dog into Musilator to take on Ben. With Rook's backup, Ben defeats Musilator and destroys the ant mutation device. They nab an emo, but Ben figures out that someone else is pulling the strings. That someone else being Kyber himself. In the dead of night, Kyber sneaks into Plumber headquarters. He manages to slip into a file room and play a holographic display. The display shows a flashback to Galvin Prime, where Max asks Asthma for help fixing the Omnitrix. Their conversation is interrupted by Malware, an incomplete mechamorph, demanding an upgrade from Azmuth. A battle ensues on Galvin B, where Malware absorbs technology and becomes a major threat. Ben, Gwen, Max, and Azmuth team up against Malware, but even with Albedo's interference, Malware upgrades himself, becoming even more dangerous. Ben, in his diamond head form, finally defeats Malware by trapping him in crystal. In the present, as Kyber escapes with these stolen files, he swears to use the secrets he's discovered to his advantage. One day, Ben and Rook are chasing an alien named Esther, who's lugging around a nuclear fusion device. Ben becomes Crash Hopper to chase her across rooftops, but she gives them the slip and leads them into Undertown. There, they find Esther and the device, but then the alien race of Kraho shows up, trying to snag the fusion engine. Ben switches to Grav Attack to fight them off, but his Omnitrix runs out of juice, leaving them in a tight spot until Esther steps in, using water to freeze the Kraho. Even the Rook's suspicious Esther, who's part Kraho herself, helps Ben and Rook contain the lava the Kraho's machine spews out. Ben, as Arcticuana, freezes the lava and Esther reluctantly guides them to the Kraho's hideout. They come up with a plan involving Emergy's powers, take down the Kraho's leader, Sebik, and destroy the machine, ending the threat. Esther steps up as the new Kraho leader, promising to work together with Undertown. So at the start of the next episode, we get a bit more from that flashback we saw earlier. It turns out that Malware drains some of the Omnitrix power and copied it into his own hands, which sets up some serious consequences for later. Back in the present, Ben and Rook think they've found Kyber's pet, but surprise, surprise, it's a trap set by Kyber himself. Meanwhile, in another flashback, we see Malware teaming up with Dr. Psychobos to clone the Omnitrix using the copy Malware has on his hand. In the present, Kyber with Psychobos egging him on is laser-focused on getting Ben's DNA to finish his Omnitrix clone. Ben does his best to outsmart Kyber, but all goes south, and he ends up getting captured, throwing a major curveball in their ongoing feud. Ben finds himself locked up on Kyber's ship, facing off against Kyber and his tough Anubian Basker. As they exchange words and blows, Ben discovers the Nematrix, a predator version of the Omnitrix, and Kyber's role in making it. Things heat up as Ben tries to escape, leading to a bunch of transformations and fights with Crabdozer and Kyber. With some smart moves and help from unexpected pals like Rook, Ben gains the upper hand for a bit. But Kyber's not giving up, pushing Ben to his limits. They end up in a crazy aerial battle as the ship goes down. In the end, Ben, as Big Chill, saves himself and Rook before Max swoops in with a plumber ship to rescue them. Kyber and his crew are beaten, but they're not out for the count yet. Season 2 Season 2 kicks off with the return of Gwen and Kevin. While Ben catches up with them, they get attacked by a ship from the sky, so they hop into the proto-TREK and take off. 
Ben, as blocks, tries to stop the ship but misses. He switches to Taraspin for a chase and manages to crash the ship. Meanwhile, Kevin gets a surprise visit from Princess Luma Red Wind, who says she's his fiancé. Ben, as XLR8, tries to help, but Luma beats him. One steps in, but she gets knocked down too. Finally, Ben defeats Luma as four arms, but they find out that according to Tetraman tradition, Luma has to marry whoever beats her. Ben's not thrilled about it, and the team decides to steer clear of the impending wedding. In Dr. Sekobo's hideout, the Nemetrix is acting up. Kyber tries to fix it but can't get it right. Malra gives Psychobos a hard time for not fixing it, so Psychobos decides to take a piece from the Omnitrix himself. He attacks Ben at the plumber headquarters and manages to snatch a piece from the Omnitrix. Ben tries to transform but the Omnitrix goes haywire and turns Rook into a Gorman hybrid. Suddenly, the base is under attack by prisoners transformed by the Omnitrix's energy blast. One of the minor villains named Liam and his crew join the chaos but Rook, now with Uptrek's powers, scares them off. With the Omnitrix finally working not much thanks to Blue Kick and Dreba, Ben defeats Liam as Kick and Hawk. The trick is fixed, and thanks to you, I got me a new alien. <laughs> now you make the feathers fly. Meanwhile, Psychobos fits the stolen piece into the Nemetrix, setting his sights on Azmuth next. Alien criminal Trombipular is back on Earth, hunting for some mysterious ultimate power. Ben, rocking four arms, tries to take him down but falls short. Rook shows up with more plumbers, but even with the backup, they struggle against Trombi Puler's might. Blue Kick and Dribba are supposed to bring in some special gear, but they get sidetracked by a TV ad for a new smoothie flavor and end up lost in Bellwood. Ben and Rook chase after Trombi Puler, who's still on the hunt for that ultimate power. Blue Kick and Dribba's misadventures continue as they bumble around town. The chase leads to a showdown at the docks, where Ben, now way big, throws down with Trombipular. Blue Kick and Dribba unintentionally help out by causing Trombipular's minions to turn against him. Ben, switching to Goop and then Echo Echo, finally takes Trombipular down. In the end, Ben thanks Blue Kick and Dryba by treating them to some smoothies for their unintentional assistance. Ben and Rook hit up the old Bellwood Days Festival, where Ben's the main attraction in a Dunk Ben 10 booth for a charity. Despite not being too keen, Ben goes along with it but ends up getting dunked over and over by Rook and the kids. While this is going on, Kyber's pet Bug Lizard crashes the party, and Ben switches between aliens to fight. However, Bug Lizard is able to fight most of them off. Finally, Ben transforms into Big Chill, an alien Bug Lizard has never seen, and manages to take it down. Meanwhile, Rook takes on Kyber and eventually sends him packing. Later, Ben finds out that Malware is also at the festival, trying to nab a sample from a rare alien called Psycholiopteran. After a scuffle, Ben helps fix up the mess from the fight. The episode wraps up with Ben back at his charity gig, getting dunked once more by Rook. Ben and Rook take a trip to Rook's home planet, Ravana, to join in the Harvest Festival. Ben gets to meet Rook's family, and gets the lowdown on the customs, including Rook's crush on a girl named Rayona. Their visit is a snag when Miroids, these pesky bike the rodents, start causing havoc during the harvest. Ben tries to lend a hand but ends up making things worse, causing a bit of chaos and damage. Turns out, Fistrix, the mastermind behind the Miroids' mischief, so Ben and Rook team up to take him down. After a tough battle, they come out on top, and Ben earns major respect from Rook's dad. One day, Ben speeds into action as XLR8, facing off against Fistina, a jewel thief. With his lightning-fast moves, XLR8 dodges Fistina's attacks, and with Rook's help, defeats her. Meanwhile, Julie, Ben's ex-girlfriend, shows up with her new boyfriend, Herva, leaving Ben surprised and wondering why Julie moved on. A flashback reveals that Ben unintentionally broke up with Julie back when he was a distracted teenager. Filled with regret, Ben tries to win Julie back, but she explains that she's moved on. Their heart-to-heart -heart is cut short when the Kraho, led by Luma Red Wind, attack under town. Ben, Rook, and Julie team up to stop Luma, who's on the hunt for wedding items. Despite Ben's efforts using his alien forms, Luma proves to be a tough adversary. In the end, Ben and Julie reconcile as friends, and Luma acknowledges Julie as Ben's betrothed before leaving. The episode wraps up with Fistina continuing to flirt with Rook, who arrests her. And now, time for another really important episode. On Galvin Prime, Azmuth and Wyatt are checking out the omnivoracious fossil at the museum. Meanwhile, Ben and Rook are cruising through Undertown, trying to kill time with Chit Chat. Things get a bit awkward when Rook asks why Ben doesn't use feedback anymore since it used to be his go-to alien. In a flashback, we see that Ben overused feedback, and it got destroyed by malware, which explains why he doesn't use it anymore. 
Meanwhile, on Galvin Prime, Kyber and Dr. Psychobos team up to take down the Galvins, transforming Kyber's pet into Omnivoracious to attack Azmuth. Ben, Rook, and Azmuth manage to defeat Omnivoracious, but then Psychobos spills the beans that they're working with Malware. Just then, Malware ends up wrecking Galvin B, leaving everyone stunned and horrified. Moments later, Ben, Rook, and Azmuth are dealing with the aftermath of Malware's attack. Azmuth warns them that Malware's scattered parts will soon reach the planet's core. When Malware confronts Azmuth and the team, they escape on a hovercraft, but Malware is hot on their trail. Ben switches to Humungosaur to take on Malware, but he's overpowered. Malware grabs Rook's proto-tool and uses it against Humungosaur. With Malware threatening to take over Galvin Prime, Max swoops in with a plumber ship to rescue them. They plan to activate Galvin Prime's firewalls to stop Malware, but the controls are shot. Ben keeps Malware busy while Blue Kick and Dribba fix the controls. They manage to activate the firewalls, stopping Malware from reaching the core, but it grows bigger and absorbs way big. Now inside Malware, Ben struggles to face his past, but through trial and error, he finds closure over losing feedback. He then regains feedback and with Azmuth's help, zaps Malware with the Helix's energy, defeating him. <laughs> With Malware out of the picture, the group leaves Galvin Prime. Kevin saves Kyber's former pet and names her Zed. In the end, the Galvanic Mechamorphs rebuild Galvin B as everyone heads back home and Season 2 ends on a positive note. Season 3 At the start of Season 3, Ben and Rook run into trouble when they're nabbed by Nyancy Chan, a girl who has the power to control cats. After breaking free, they then jet off to Peptos 11 to aid the Gormans, who are these funky humanoid amoeba-like species. The Gormans, split into Perk, Merc, and Queen subspecies, are getting hammered by the Incursions. Ben jumps into the fray, going Echo Echo to lend a hand. But things get heated between the Perk and Merc, leading to a big face-off. Ben tries to play Peacemaker, but ends up backing different plays, causing a rift with Rook. Meanwhile, on the Incursing ship, a T snags Queen Voracia Rumbletum and demands Peptus Eleven's surrender. Ben and the Gormans launch a rescue out, facing off against Atia. After a tough fight, Atia goes down and the Gormans save the day. To keep Pepto's XI out of enemy hands, the Gormans chow down on their own planet. Not the most effective solution, but eh, whatever. Later, Atia reports her defeat to Milius, who's now eyeing Earth for his next move. Ben, Max, and Liam get dragged into a crazy scuffle over stolen Vaxisaurian eggs. In a flash, Ben transforms into feedback, impressing a Kinesellerin girl who's filming the whole thing. But Max isn't pleased. He scolds Ben for his risky moves, leading to a heated argument. Later on, Ben teams up with the clumsy Dooblue Kick and Dreba for a wild mission, finding the legendary 23rd Mr. Smoothie Joint. Their adventure takes them to a bizarre interdimensional shop run by the eccentric Professor Hopestar. In a parallel dimension resembling Bellwood, Ben meets his alter ego, Ben 23, who's a renowned hero with his own set of cool aliens. When the villain 7-7 attacks, Ben and Ben 23 team up to save the day. They manage to foil 7-7's plans and emerge victorious. Asmuth, the Omnitrix creator, appears and gives Ben 23 a new hero watch, marking his growth as a hero. Back home, Ben patches things up with Max, realizing the value of listening and what it really means to be a hero. Ben and his crew, with none other than Vildax as their prisoner, run into trouble while trying to take Vildax to Incarsican. They're ambushed by incursion forces led by Atia. Vilgax swears he's not behind the attack, and to survive, Ben and Vilgax have to team up. They face off against Atia and her crew, and Ben comes out on top, defeating them. But Vilgax manages to slip away, leaving Ben feeling guilty. Max tries to lift Ben's spirits, reminding him that he did everything he could. Despite the victory, Ben can't shake off the feeling of failure over Vilgax's escape. In the following episode, the two timelines of young Ben and Team Ben meet when they are fighting in. Amidst their battle, the two accidentally swap bodies, leading to confusion and chaos. While young Ben enjoys being in Team Ben's body, Team Ben tries to figure out how to return to his own body. With the help of Gwen, Rook, and Paradox, they discover that Eon is after the Chrono Navigator, a device that can manipulate time. After a series of battles and time-traveling adventures, both Bens transform into clockwork and successfully defeat Eon, restoring order to the timelines. Despite their memories being erased, Team Ben and Young Ben bid farewell and the episode ends with the introduction of a time war by Ben 10,000, leaving Team Ben excited for more adventures.
One day, Ben finds himself up against Thunderpig, who accuses him of eating his father. Ben, as Echo Echo, manages to defeat Thunderpig but accidentally wrecks Mr. Bauman's car in the process. Mr. Bauman, already fed up with Ben for past mishaps like a childhood incident with a magnifying glass, a teenage tangle with Dr. Anemo, and Big Chill freezing his car, gets even more furious. To teach Ben a lesson, Mr. Bauman makes him deliver packages without using the Omnitrix. During his deliveries, Ben gets caught up in an auction mix-up involving Siphon, Corvo, and a bunch of other villains all vying for a dwarf star. Using his alien forms, Ben eventually outsmarts the villains and retrieves the dwarf star, but then chaos ensues when a returning truck from Space wrecks Mr. Bauman's house. Ben manages to escape, leaving Mr. Bauman frustrated in the pouring rain. On the planet Terminus 3, plumbers led by Magister Arnux find themselves stranded in a toxic atmosphere. When Max, Ben, and Rook receive a distress call, they discover that the only cure is the Venom of Grackflint. To reach Terminus Egeu, they need to get past the incursing blockade, so they enlist the help of Rad Doosman and his ship, the Lovely Duck. Their journey is filled with challenges, including a run-in with the Incursions, but they also encounter Pax, who has been guarding the Grackflint. Despite the obstacles, they manage to capture the Grackflint and obtain its Venom, which successfully cures the Plumbers. Rad and Pax decide to join Ben's team, and together, they head back to Earth, having accomplished their mission. One time, Sheriff Watson and Rook Shar, who is Rook's sister, get a call about trouble on Ravana. They discover that Incursions are invading the planet, but they're saved by a skilled pilot named Young One. Back on Earth, Young One tells Ben and Rook about the invasion, so they head to Ravana to check it out. When they arrive, everything seems normal, but Rook's family is acting weird. They soon realize that the Incursions are using mind control to make everyone harvest Amber Ogia, a super valuable resource. Ben and Rook confront Dr. Sekobos and Atia, the masterminds behind the plan. The big fight breaks out, and Ben turns into Astrodactyl to take on Dr. Sekobos. That's handy! Handy ish! They manage to beat the bad guys, but Atia gets away with a bit of Amber Ogia, planning to cause trouble on Earth. The episode ends with Rook being hailed as a hero by his family, and Ben and Rook head back to Earth to get ready for Atia's next move. Back on Earth, Ben and Rook find themselves stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic when they witness a strange phenomenon. Aliens popping up all over Bellwood, causing chaos among the citizens. It becomes clear that the Incursions are gearing up for an invasion of Earth. At Plumber Headquarters, Max gets ready for the impending invasion while Ben tries to reassure the frightened citizens. However, some people see Ben as a traitor, adding to the tension. In the midst of trying to calm everyone down, Ben accidentally triggers the Omnitrix's randomizer function, causing him to transform into different aliens uncontrollably. As the chaos escalates, the Incursions manage to breach Earth's defenses, leading to a full-blown invasion. Ben fights back using his alien forms, but he is eventually overwhelmed and captured. In order to prevent further destruction, Ben reluctantly agrees to leave Earth. He is sent off in an incursing space pod, leaving Earth under incursing control. Out in space, Ben's stuck mulling over his situation while Milius takes charge of Earth with his way bad army. Meanwhile, Will harangues out there, trying to spin the invasion like it's a good thing. Back on Earth, Wen, Kevin, Rook, Lukic, and Argit are scrambling to arm up for a resistance. Sure, there's some tension in the group, but they manage to agree on a plan to take down Dr. Psychobos, the brains behind the way bads. Things don't go as planned, though, and they end up getting nabbed by Atia's crew. And guess what? Argit's the one who sold them out. But hey, Bullfrag swoops in to save the day, revealing he's actually Ben in disguise. With his help, they break into Plumber Headquarters to free Max and the other locked-up plumbers. Ben spills the beans about how he escaped from space and turned into Bullfrag, all thanks to Asmuth's help. Now with the team back together, they face off against Milius, leading to a surprising move by Atia, who overthrows his father and forms a truce between Earth and the Incursions. Despite Atia's flirting, Ben's not interested and decides to stick with Earth. And as the Incursions peace out, Ben's comeback gives Earth a fresh dose. Season 4 at the start of Season 4, Ben and Rook are on a wild chase after a truck driven by a hologram. Turns out, it's Inspector 13 behind the wheel, doing his own thing with the legal alien tech. Ben uses his smarts to outmaneuver Inspector 13's tech on robots, all while keeping up a sophisticated act. But surprise, surprise, the driver's actually albino in disguise. He's pulling strings to get his hands on a polymorphic crystal for some serious power. In a big showdown, Ben, Rook, Argit, and the gang manage to foil Albedo's plans, at least for now. Albedo makes a getaway with the crystal, but not without setting the stage for more conflict, teaming up with Kyber and transforming into his ultimate form of Ward Kyber's ship. 
So Ben, Max, and Rook run into Max's old partner Phil, who's now a terror and Chula, sucking up power from Undertown. They try to contain him, but he bolts to Bellwood. They catch up and trap him at a construction site, but his electric field messes up plumber headquarters. They rush to stop him, but he snatches Ben and heads back to Undertown to drain the Nosedinian's energy. Ben's stuck with electric aliens thanks to Phil messing with the Omnitrix. They leave Phil on a chase to wear him out. Finally, they trick him into a null void portal and send him packing. Max is torn, but he knows it had to be done. Ben lightens the mood by suggesting they finish their alien recipe shopping, bringing back a bit of normalcy. In Undertown, Ben and Magister Patelide take on Liam, Tummyhead, and Sweet Eel Sparkle Funk, who snags some plumber gear. Ben speeds around his XLR8, and with Patelide's help, they beat the baddies and grab back the tech. Meanwhile, one bumps into her cousin Lucy, who's working with the plumbers. One's radar goes off, especially when some fancy plumber tanks vanish. She's convinced Lucy's involved and starts digging, despite Ben saying otherwise. Turns out, Lucy was actually undercover to nab the real crook, Gorvin. Ben, Gwen, and the plumbers team up to catch Gorvin and Siphon, getting the stolen tech back. One says sorry to Lucy for doubting her, and they patch things up, sharing a cute moment from their childhood. Ben and Rook are hot on Albedo's tail in Undertown, but he manages to slip away in a spaceship. Rook lets Max know about Ben's disappearance, while Ben finds himself stuck in Kyber's hunting ground. Meanwhile, Rook and Max search the galaxy for Ben's DNA, but mistakenly pick up Albedo's instead. Ben agrees to a hunting challenge with Kyber and, as Ditto, outsmarts Penunchians who are natural predators of his alien race Splixens. When Albedo goes into his ultimate form, Ben turns into Feedback who saves the day by defeating Albedo's ultimate Humungusaur. Rook and Max arrive on time to nab Albedo, but their win is short-lived when Kyber reveals Azmuth's been captured. Now with their back against the wall, Ben's team is on a mission to rescue Azmuth from Albedo and Kyber. When Albedo activates the Cerebral Vortex, Ben becomes Taraspin to mess up his plans. Despite Kyber's tricks, a team grabs Azmuth's essence and runs. Albedo chases them, leading to a wild chase through space and Earth. Albio's ship crashes, and there's a big showdown where Ben faces negative ultimate grav attack and Kyber's pets. With teamwork, they fend off the baddies, but Albedo almost snags Azmuth's essence until Ben, as pesky dust, steps in. They find out Albedo's plan to make a cerebral vortex and confront him at Billion's Tower. Beating Albedo brings Azmuth back to full brain power, but Albio's stabilizer goes wonky, turning him into a young Ben, much to his horror. And with that, Season 4 comes to an end. Season 5, now after that whole drama, Earth is relatively at peace. However, one day, Ben and Rook notice strange purple clouds blanketing the sky. They investigate and end up at a circus, suspecting the villainous Zombozos behind it all. Rook gets turned into a zombie clown, so Ben has to fight him using his alien forms. Meanwhile, Zombozo, weakened by the lack of fear on Earth, plans to amp up the scare factor by zombifying folks into clown zombies. Ben faces Zombozo at the circus, but Zombozo gets stronger from the audience's fear. When even Max gets zombified, Ben's fear gives Zombozo a boost, but he manages to defeat him with Tupic's help, while also turning everyone back to normal. Sadly for Ben, Zombozo manages to escape, the circus freaks get busted, and Ben admits he is still a bit afraid of these clowns. One night at freaking university, Gwen, disguised as Lucky Girl, takes on the villain Punchinello, who's trying to make off with something. He beats him only to reveal he's actually Professor Anaceto. The next day, Ben, Rook, Gwen, Kevin, and Zed check out the university and find some weird stuff happening like a rock monster on the loose. They figure out it's all tied to the charms of Bezel. Their old foe dark star posing as a student named Dante captures Gwen to use her powers. Despite their best efforts, Darkstar opens a portal to Legger Domain. Ben now goes freak, defeats Darkstar, and Gwen's rival Charmcaster, disguised as a cop, deals with Darkstar. Just when they think it's over, Ben's scariest enemy, Zoo Scare, shows up. Meanwhile, Ben, who has no idea about what he's going to face soon, jokes about getting an honorary degree for their adventure. At Plumber Headquarters, a Dr. Animo, who was previously locked up, breaks out with the help of a talking toy that zaps his way out of the cell. Ben, Rook, and Magister Patelide try to stop him, but don't succeed. Dr. Animo meets his future self in the woods, who warns him about a future danger and gives him a gadget to escape. Ben and Rook run into Dr. Animo and his future self, along with a guy named Spanner. Spanner helps them beat the Animos and reveals he's from the future and knows Lieutenant Steel. Ben uses a new alien, Katrat, to beat the Animos by giving them temporary memory loss. Spanner takes future Dr. Animo back to the future, leaving Ben and Rook to ponder their bizarre encounter. 
While passing through the dark inner system in the Milky Way, Ben and Rook, along with their allies Rad and Hobble, crash the lovely duck on the planet Anertransel. They're mistaken for monsters by the locals and Hobble gets captured. They're also stalked by a mummy-like alien called Thep Kufen. Ben fights Thep Kufen, but is rescued by Scout, a lobo and plumber. Scout helps fix the ship and reveals that the alien they fought is actually a criminal named Kufulu. Meanwhile, Zuscare, who escaped Legger Domain and his buddy Victor are up to no good. Kufulu attacks again, but Ben beats him as Crash Hopper. Zuscare, Krujo, and Victor show up and Ben transforms into blocks and later feedback to take on Zuscare. Enrigi's true form finally knocks Zuscare out. Krujo and Victor drag Zuscare off and the locals realize they were wrong about Ben and his crew. And with that ends another wild adventure of Ben and Rook. On Anor Transel, Charmcaster tries to snatch the Alpha Rune from Zuscare, but he sends her packing. Meanwhile, on the lovely duck, Ben gets a surprise visit from Charmcaster. Despite the rocky pass, Charmcaster explains that Zuscare brought her there and suggests teaming up against him. Ben's not sure at first, but he eventually agrees. As they make their way to Zuscare's castle, they face off against living pumpkins along the way. Ben, who accidentally turns into swamp fire, discovers some new powers and helps take down the pumpkins. Following that, they battle mirror reflections before confronting Zuscare himself, who's drained the Alpha Rune's powers. Charmcaster grabs the rune, but it sends her into a rage and she starts attacking everyone. With a mix of spells and Gwen's gear, they manage to take Charmcaster down, and she's zapped off to Legger Domain. Once there, she asserts her dominance over Ad Waikia, a stone figure, who now serves her as a master. As Ben, Rook, Rad, and Hobble get ready to leave Anor Transel, Zuscare brings back Lord Transel of Lada using the Alpha Room's power. Ben gets accidentally tossed into space but turns into Astrodactyl to save himself, and Rad swoops in to pick him up. Back at Zuscare's castle, Lord Transel wakes up and goes after Dr. Victor and Kufalu, but Zuscare stops him. Ben meets up with the team, but they're attacked by mind controlled locals led by Lord Transel and Zuscare. Ben scans Lord Transel and becomes Vampire, using his Vlada powers to escape with Victor, Krujo, and Kufalu. They fight Zuscare's crew, and Hobble ends up wrecking Zuscare's Vlada reviving machine. Ben, now Atomix, beats Zuscare and hurts Lord Transel, breaking the mind control. Victor, who had a change of heart about being a villain, takes Lord Transel for lockup, and the gang leaves the Anor system, with Lord Transel locked up around the system's sun. In an alternate universe where Ben never got the Omnitrix, he's in for a wild ride. First, he helps a lady get her cat down from a tree, and then rushes to a soccer game where his team unexpectedly wins. Later, he bumps into his cousin and gets robbed by Kevin Levin, who snags his busted watch. Grandpa Max scoops him up in a rust bucket too, and Ben complains about how boring his life is. But then, out of nowhere, he's attacked by Bad Ben, a copycat who morphs into Coast Freak and gives chase. Lucky for him, Ben Prime swoops in to save the day, revealing that there are tons of different Bens across the multiverse, and someone's nabbing them. They're ambushed by Eon and Vilgax, who are teaming up to mess with Bens from other universes. With the help of other Bens and Gwen Ten, they do get out with their evil twins. But things take a dark turn when Vilgax sets off a bomb that wipes out all the other Ben Tennysons, leaving Ben Prime to sacrifice himself to save No Watch Ben, the last one left. Now, no watch Ben's on his own, ready to take on whatever's coming his way. But he's got backup. Professor Paradox shows up, hinting they'll have to go back to the beginning to fix this mess. With the other Ben Tennysons from the multiverse gone, no watch Ben steps up to save the timelines from Vildax and Eon. Professor Paradox guides him to the moment when Ben Prime first finds the Omnitrix. No watch Ben ensures everything goes down the way it should, helping Jiling injure Vildax and ensuring the Omnitrix gets to Ben Prime. Using his alien forms, he nudges Ben Prime toward taking the Omnitrix, setting his destiny in motion. Paradox then sends No Watch Ben on a mission to gather good Bens from different dimensions for a big showdown. They recruit allies like Ben 23 and Ben 10,000, all while being sneaky to avoid Ben's attention. Together, they face off against Eon and Vilgax, with No Watch Ben using Clockwork's powers to undo Vilgax's damage and bring back the other Bens. In a huge battle, the Bens beat Vilgax, with no watch Ben landing the final blow. Ben 10,000 and Gwen 10 head back to their timelines and Max Tennyson takes Vilgax into custody. No watch Ben's adventure ends with him realizing he's a hero in his own right. He watches as the mysteries of the multiverse unfold, saying goodbye to Ben Prime before returning to his own timeline. And thus ends the fifth season of Ben 10 Omniverse. Season 6 Season 6 starts with Ben finding himself tangled up with a bunch of bounty hunters in Undertown, all after some mysterious object. 
He teams up with Spanner, this shady character, to track down Argit, who is rumored to be holding onto it. When they run into Krob and his gang, Ben goes full-on Frankenstrike to take them down. Meanwhile, Siphon, the new boss of the bar, reveals that the object is a cube with a bunch of dehydrated Takadon robots inside. Argit goes and swallows the cube, and suddenly, the robots start popping out of him. Ben, Rook, and Spanner team up to rescue Argit from Siphon and the bounty hunters. With Argit calling the shots with the Tekadens, they kick butt and save Undertown. And now, Argit's basically the king of Undertown, soaking up all that attention like a boss. One day, the Rooters, this secretive group within the Plumbers, take over the Plumber base and demand Kevin Levin's surrender. Ben, Rook, and Max can't do much against them since the Rooters have a tight grip. However, Ben manages to slip away and warns Kevin, who's just working at a car shop. The Rooters, led by Cervantes, go after Kevin, but things get crazy when Kevin accidentally absorbs Cervantes' powers, getting a peek into his own past. Turns out, the Rooters did some experiments on Kevin in the Null Void, creating these hybrid beings called the Amalgam Kids. The Rooters attack Kevin and Ben, and Kevin's new powers make it a tough fight. Ben also learns that Osmosians like Kevin aren't actually aliens but just humans with special alien abilities. In the final showdown, the Plumbers take down the Rooters, and Kevin decides to restore Argit's memories about the Rooters and his past, setting the stage for more conflicts down the line. In Bellwood, Ben and Rook get into a little fender bender with Mr. Bauman's truck, driven by Fistrick. Ben, as Ditto, tries to stop Fistrick, but doesn't quite pull it off. The truck ends up crashing into Mr. Bauman's store, and Ben now blocks contains Fistrick. But things take a legal turn when at Plumber Headquarters, Chadsmouth, this big-shot intergalactic lawyer gets Fistrick off on a technicality. Chadsmuth brags about his legal skills and leaves his card with Ben. Later, at Mr. Smoothie, Chadsmuth butts in again when Ben and Rook try to stop Bug Light. He insists they can't mess with Bug Light's so-called crime. Ben's pretty annoyed by Chadsmuth's tactics, but things get really wild when Celestial Sepians show up, accusing Ben of messing with the universe without permission. Ben's hauled off to an intergalactic court, where Chadsmuth ends up defending him. Chadsmith gets Ben to confess, but then he suggests this Tetramin trial of combat, letting Ben fight his accusers. Ben goes four arms but struggles against the Galactic Gladiator. That's when Chadsmith says, hey, why not go big? Ben turns into Alien X, gaining full control and defeating the Galactic Gladiator. The court rules in Ben's favor, even finding Serena and Bellicus, the Celestial Sapiens, for their part. Chadsmith, feeling pretty good about his win, hints at more legal battles with Ben in the future before taking off. Meanwhile, on the Albright farm, Alan crosses paths with Kevin, Argit, and Zed. A rooter named Swift shows up and things get tense, especially when Kevin tries to help Alan regain his memories. Meanwhile, Ben, Gwen, and Rook crack a code in a letter from Kevin, finding out he's got Alan. They hurry to the farm to lend a hand. Over in the Null Void, Kevin sneaks into the rooter's base and confronts Cervantes. Ben's crew arrives, but Kevin's not happy about their interference. Cervantes starts messing with Kevin's memories, turning him against Ben. The big fight breaks out, with Ben taking on the Rooters while Gwen, Rook, and the Amalgam kids handle the rest. Cervantes twists things to make Kevin think Ben's a major threat. Ben goes Alien X to try and sort things out, but Kevin jumps in, thinking Ben's the real danger. Despite Ben's efforts to talk sense into him, Kevin's dead set on stopping what he sees as a huge threat. The conflict heats up, and Kevin ends up teaming up with Cervantes to track down and take out Ben. Ben and his crew, including Gwen, Rook, Zed, and Argit, make a run for it into the Null Void to escape Kevin, who's unexpectedly turned against Ben. Argit warns them that the Rooters, this dangerous group, are hot on their heels. Even though Gwen's confused by Kevin's betrayal, Ben's sure they can bring him back. They run into some nasty creatures that the way bad, but Ben accidentally transforms into Ball Weevil instead of Way Big. Meanwhile, Kevin's joined forces with the Rooters, all fueled by a thirst for revenge against Ben. Cervantes, the head rooter, sees Ben as a big threat because of the Omnitrix and wants him gone. With Kevin's memories messed with, Ben finds out about Cervantes' plan to use Kevin against him. In Big Showdown, Kevin ultimately breaks free from Cervantes' control, saving Ben and the gang. The plumbers, Earth's space cops, step in and take down the rooters, stripping them of their powers and tech. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin patch things up, while the rooters are left to deal with the unfriendly creatures of the Null Void. Season 7 Season 7 starts on Ravana, where Rook Shar, who is Rook's sister, gets her father's blessing to join the Plumber's Academy and heads off for Sheriff Watson. They run into Master Kundo, who's not thrilled about Shar leaving, but she boards the ship anyway. Meanwhile, Ben and Rook have a regular day on Earth, with Ben noticing Gwen's fan page and Rook planning a quick stop for Shar. 
Meanwhile, on the ship, Shar finds Young One hiding. Together, they land on Earth, where Shar proudly announces her future as a plumber. Ben offers smoothies to celebrate, unaware that Kundo's lurking around. Eventually, Kundo shows up and reveals that he wants to take Shar back. Ben tries to fight him as water hazard, but Kundo proves too strong even for our beloved hero. Luckily for them, Kundo gets distracted by loud music coming from a nearby car, which gives our heroes a chance to escape. The team then heads to Plumber HQ, where Rook's proto-tool is being fixed. Shark decides to confront Kundo after learning of his actions, and Ben offers to help. Eventually, with Young One's help, Kundo is defeated and Shark chooses to stay on Earth with Rook. Meanwhile, Kundo, who is thought to be dead, is now a cyborg and vows revenge as the plumbers gear up for their next adventure. A freaking university, Professor Xaglov is having a bit of a struggle keeping his students in line while inside, Hex is teaching a class on magic. Wen really impresses Hex with her knowledge, but then Charmcaster shows up and totally disrupts the class by revealing the power of the Staff of Ages. Hex decides to end the class early and Charmcaster disappears before Gwen can even talk to her. Meanwhile, Rook is dealing with a giant shoplifter in Undertown, but Ben jumps in after Gwen calls for help. At Kevin's garage, Gwen confirms that she saw Charmcaster and Kevin agrees to join the effort. Back at the university, Gwen starts getting worried because Hex is acting really strange. Later, she discovers that Charmcaster has turned Hex into stone. Charmcaster then uses Hex to access his library and retrieve the Staff of Ages, which leads to a big showdown with Gwen. Kevin's car gets wrecked in the process, but Rook and Kevin still join the fight. In the end, it's Gwen who defeats Charmcaster, sending her and the Staff of Ages back to Legger Domain. Ben and Rook decide to visit the Bellwood Museum for Ben's date with Esther, where they unexpectedly run into Kai Green. Spanner also appears, showing interest in a particular orb that Kai identifies as a valuable artifact. Things take a chaotic turn when Subdora, a sneaky Merlinicipian, tries to steal the orb, setting off an alarm. Ben transforms into Wildman and gives chase, but Subdora manages to slip away. Later, Subdora returns and successfully steals the orb, outmaneuvering Ben and the others. Ben ends up trapped inside the museum with Kai, and tensions rise between them. Meanwhile, outside, Rook, Esther, and Spanner team up to pursue Subdora. Their efforts pay off when Kai and Esther work together to thwart Subdora's escape. Adding to the chaos, Exoskull, another alien, attempts to steal the orb, but is ultimately defeated by Ben and Rook. Surprisingly, Spanner reveals himself as a time traveler and decides to take the orb back to his time to ensure a better future. In the future, an older Kai discovers the orb, realizing it wasn't lost forever. Spanner, satisfied with his mission, observes as Ben 10,000 and Kai celebrate their victory. Meanwhile, Exoskull and Subdora hand over the orb's mechanism to a villain named Maltruant, who claims to possess the key to controlling time itself. While Ben is chilling out and playing video games, he gets an unexpected visit from Ben 23 and Azma 23, who drop by so Ben can give Ben 23 a bit of mentoring. Their gaming session is interrupted when they hear about a robbery involving Subdora and Exoskull. Despite their casual attitude, the Bens and Rooks spring into action and engage in a battle. However, things take a wild turn when Maltruan's Chrono Cog suddenly activates, transporting them to an alternate dimension. In this crazy Mad Bang universe, they encounter twisted versions of familiar faces like Mad Rook, Mad Harang, and a really nasty version of Ben himself. The Bens find themselves in a race against time to stop Maltruan from starting a time war. Along the way, they face challenges, deal with frozen Omnitrixes, and confront the menacing threat of their evil doppelbangers. In a climactic showdown, Mad Ben manages to get his hands on Maltruan's key, setting the stage for a potential start of the Time War and leaving the fate of the entire multiverse hanging in the balance. Ben and Ben 23 find themselves in a tight spot when they're captured by Mad Rook on orders from the villainous Mad Ben. Forced to dig under the watchful eye of their captors, they're joined by Dr. Psychobos, who surprisingly becomes an ally and helps them break free. Escaping in a truck, they take refuge in a rundown Mr. Smoothie, where they hatch a plan to take down Mad Ben. With Dr. Psychobo's help, they repair their Omnitrixes, allowing Ben to transform into his aliens once more. They return to confront Mad Ben, leading to an epic showdown. Ben and Ben 23 use their alien forms to free the workers and defeat Mad Ben, inspiring the workers to rebel against their oppressors. Their attempt to return home using Clockwork's time travel fails, but Rook arrives in a dimension traveling Mr. Smoothie to rescue them just in time. Ben praises Ben 23 for keeping it together, and the two Bens bid farewell to the Mad Dimension. Season 8 In the final season of Ben 10 Omniverse, Kyber steals the Nematrix from Plumber Headquarters, leaving behind a message for Ben. 
Unfazed by the threat, Ben believes he's on a lucky streak after winning a Taden and getting free drinks. Kyber then arrives at the black hole and recruits Skurd, a shape-shifting parasite, to enhance his abilities with DNA samples from the Nematrix. As Ben enjoys his lucky streak at Mr. Smoothie's, Kyber suddenly attacks, prompting Ben to transform into Heat Blast. Skurd, however, equips Kyber with Crabdozer armor which turns the tables. Luckily, Blue Kick and Dreba's teleporter sends Ben and Rook to safety which inadvertently disrupts Kyber's plans. Ben is still convinced of his luck and has them teleport again, with the intention of stopping Kyber. The teleportation lands Ben in Kyber's lair, where the two are set to battle. During the battle, Skurd attaches to Ben and enhances Humongasaur's form with various alien abilities which turn the tide of the fight. In the end, Rook intervenes, disabling the Nematrix and apprehending Kyber. After the dust settles, Ben is now stuck with Skurd, who claims it's Ben's lucky day to have him by his side. Seems like his luck finally ran out. Rook Blanco comes to Ben Tennyson's aid after Ben's super cool bike 10 speed encounters a mishap. A following car accident reveals the presence of Time Beast eggs, which begin to hatch due to the disturbance caused by criminals Exoskull and Subdora. Ben transforms into feedback and with Rook's assistance engages in battle against the villains and the emerging Time Beast. In the chaos, Bellwood is accidentally frozen in time. Professor Paradox and Ben 10,000 soon arrive in time cycles to address the temporal crisis. Eon, the mastermind behind the Time Beasts, is forced to adjust his plans in response to the hero's interference. Following a series of intense battles, including one that inflicts substantial damage on the city, the heroes succeed in subduing the villains and containing the Time Beast. However, Eon manages to escape with two Time Beast eggs, moving him an inch closer to executing his sinister scheme. Meanwhile, Ben and Rook get to keep the time cycles for themselves, allowing them a free trip across time. In Dos Santos, Kai finds herself in a tight spot and needs Ben's help after getting a call from her grandfather, Wes. To her surprise, just as she's about to reach out to them, Ben and Rook show up from the future, causing a bit of confusion. They team up to search for alien artifacts in the Temple of the Sky, but they face several challenges along the way. Despite not speaking the same language and having different backgrounds from the natives, the three of them stick together and overcome obstacles, including natural and artificial guardians of the temple. As they progress, they realize that the artifacts hold fragments of Maltruant, a dangerous enemy from the past. Their journey takes a dangerous turn when they encounter Exoskull, leading to a fierce battle. Although they manage to retrieve one of the artifacts, Exoskull escapes through a time portal, adding to their frustrations. After completing their mission, Ben and Rook return to their time, leaving Kai with mixed feelings. She's grateful for their help, but also a bit annoyed by Ben's playful teasing. One night at Freaking University, Lucky Girl finds herself in a showdown with a villain named Mino Toga. However, before she can apprehend him, she is overwhelmed by fans, allowing the villain to slip away. Two professors, Jag Liv and Aniceto, witness the incident and later confront Gwen, who tries to conceal her identity. Meanwhile, Kevin and Zed have taken up residence in Gwen's library basement. Reluctantly, one agrees to help Kevin locate his car, which is mysteriously located in Legger Domain. Upon finding the car, Kevin and his vehicle are suddenly teleported away, leaving Gwen alone with Charmcaster. The cunning villain traps Gwen in a totem, rendering her helpless. Kevin seeks out Ben and Rook for assistance, while Gwen, imprisoned with Hex, Darkstar, and Adwegya, struggles to break free from Charmcaster's magical bag. Ben, Rook, and Kevin Aided by the unexpected help of the janitor, Bezel launch a daring rescue mission to save Gwen. To their surprise, Bezel reveals himself as a legendary magician, adding a new layer of intrigue to the situation. In the end, Ben's team battles Charmcaster's minions, ultimately outwitting her and tricking her into sealing herself inside her own bag. With Charmcaster defeated, Gwen contemplates the possibility of friendship with her old rival under different circumstances. Later, Rook and the assistant robot called Robucket encounter challenges at the plumber's base, where they face malfunctions and communication breakdowns. They soon discover that Kundo has seized control of the base with intentions to destroy it, along with other plumber's bases. Despite Ben, Max, and the plumber's efforts to regain control, the base initiates a lockdown. With the unexpected help of Festina, a former prisoner, they confront Kundo. However, their victory is short-lived as Kundo activates a self-destruct sequence, putting the base on a countdown to destruction. Thinking quickly, Ben transforms into Upgrade and manages to propel the base into orbit, but they are still in danger as the core is on the brink of exploding. In a heroic act of sacrifice, Robucket chooses to contain the explosion, saving the planet but losing his own existence in the process. The plumbers pay tribute to Robucket's sacrifice and Rook is promoted to the rank of Magister for his bravery and leadership during the crisis. In the aftermath, Festina is offered the opportunity to join the plumbers as a full-time member, 
reflecting the team's appreciation for her assistance. Frustrated with Skurd's constant distractions, Ben decides it's time to remove him from the Omnitrix. Seeking assistance, Ben travels to Galvin Prime to meet with Azmuth, the creator of the Omnitrix. However, their visit coincides with a devious plan by Albedo and Vilgax to steal Malware's remains and launch an attack on Galvin Prime. Azmuth successfully removes Skurd from the Omnitrix, but the peace is short-lived as Albedo and Vilgax launch their assault. Ben, Max, and the Galvins are forced into a fierce battle to defend the planet. Despite facing initial challenges, Ben, with Skurd's help, manages to turn the tide of the battle. In a daring move, Ben defeats Vilgax by hurling him into his own ship's warp core, causing a catastrophic meltdown. As a result, Vilgax is left petrified and Albedo faces consequences for his treacherous actions. As Ben and Skurd rekindle their bond, Malra's remains begin to regenerate, hinting at potential future threats. In the future, chaos erupts at Ben 10,000's headquarters when the villainous Dr. Animo tries to steal the Ars project using the Chrono Porter. Fortunately, Spanner, a heroic ally, intervenes and manages to capture Dr. Animo. However, the situation escalates when the President of Earth, revealed to be Argit, arrives and the Plumbers are faced with a crisis caused by a solar flare. As if things weren't bad enough, Subdora infiltrates Plumbers HQ and steals the powerful Anihilur under the guidance of the sinister Maltruant. Maltruant plans to combine the Anihilur with a Dwarf Star to further his nefarious goals. Meanwhile, Max engages in a fierce battle with Dr. Animo, ultimately subduing and recapturing him. Exoskull, now empowered by the Dwarf Star, unleashes chaos and destruction. This leads to an intense face-off between Ben 10,000, Kai, Gwendolyn, and the formidable Maltruan. Just when it seems like all hope is lost, Ken, Ben 10,000's son, who is secretly Spanner, makes a surprising appearance. He summons Ben and Rook from the present to join the fight. Despite their combined efforts, Maltruan gains the upper hand and appears to defeat the heroes, casting them into the vastness of space. However, Ben refuses to give up and transforms into Vampire, forcing Maltruant to retreat. The heroes are left in shock and uncertainty as Maltruant escapes through time on a time beast, leaving them to contemplate their next move. In thrilling conclusion, Ben and Rook chase Maltruant through the time stream, ultimately confronting him on a Contumelius ship where he intends to use the modified Anihilar to create his own universe. Despite Maltruan's efforts, Ben, as Chromastone, manages to breach the protective barrier around the Anihilar and contain its destructive energy. Maltruan is defeated as Ben, in his feedback form, blasts him with the Anihilar's energy, causing Maltruan to implode. Surviving the ordeal, Ben reveals that the Omnitrix has a protective function that saved him from death. The impressed Contumelia, which are the fifth dimensional beings of the universe, invite Ben and Rook to witness the creation of a new universe. They also reveal the importance of Scourge species the slime by its inceding life across the multiverse. Skurd willingly joins his ancestors, parting ways with Ben. Professor Paradox appears, explaining that Ben's victory over Maltruan is part of a time loop where Ben repeatedly defeats Maltruan, hides his parts across the multiverse, and ultimately defeats him again. Paradox invites Ben and Rook to help him hide Maltruan's parts before sending them back to their universe. Returning home, Ben, inspired by the creation of the new universe, proposes a road trip with Gwen and Kevin to explore the universe, a watch being created. The series ends with a grand view of the universe, showcasing the vastness of the multiverse. So that was Ben 10 Omniverse from beginning to end in detail. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel for similar content.